Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 22nd day of November, and it is Tuesday, and today's topic is titled, Time to Re-Dig re Some Wells. So, amen, and we'll get started on that here in a few minutes, but first I'd like to greet you, as always, <clears throat> in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, amen, and uh, he wants to save your soul today, if you'll just humble yourself and uh, repent of what you're trusting in, what you're putting your faith and trust in, and turn to God and trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he'll wash away all your sin. Amen. All right, we're going to start with today's scripture song, and this is from Matthew 6, 33, and then 7, 7. So press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 33, and Matthew 7, 7. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That's right. Go. No. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Things shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Open will be opened unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, things shall be added unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find. And it shall be open unto you, it shall be open unto you. Amen. All right. And if you notice there that Brother Dean has the little knocking sound at the part where he uh, does the um, part about the knocking, it shall be open unto you. And then also if you caught that uh, in th at the second part and the third part that... Uh, um, he sings the top part, and then Sister Patty sings the bottom part, and then they switch it around, and then uh, she sings the top part, and he sings the bottom part. So if you have somebody to sing with you, uh, you, know, you can do that. Try that. Amen. So praise the Lord, and we'll uh, do that again at the end of the broadcast. Maybe we'll do that a couple times, seeing you know, how much time we have left afterwards. Um, so amen. All right. So remember those two things, the, the knocking. And then the, the flipping of the parts. Amen. So if you have somebody to sing along with you, like uh, the woman can sing the bottom part while the men sing the top part, and then they switch it out. And then the um, women sing, sing the top part, and the men sing the bottom part on the second and third uh, time they sing it. Amen. All right. Now it's time to get into today's topic for November 22nd. And today is Tuesday. And again, the uh, topic is titled, Time to Redig Some Wells. And the passage is Genesis 26, 18a. It says, And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of uh, Abraham, his father. Uh, Genesis 26, 18a. And today's author is uh, Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So let's get into this topic here and encourage you to read um, the entirety of Genesis 26, um, talking about these wells here. I know there's some context here to that, and I'm sure he's going to get into that um, in the topic here, but I uh, encourage you to go read the entire chapter and find out uh, what these wells are and more about that. Amen? Alright, so um, let's read here. Uh, Brother Green writes here, he says, Ivor uh, Powell, who lived from 1910 to uh, 1998 in his book of sermons, uh, Bible cam Cameos, uh, uh, wrote, if I must dig, it is better to dig for my soul than a 
uh, grave for my body. So he wrote here again, If I must dig, it is better to dig for my soul than a grave for my body. Hmm. Right? So, continuing on, uh, he writes here, I am sure I have heralded from these pages and in more than one sermon the following. Our forefathers were not fools. Hmm. Right? <clears throat> So he says, our forefathers are not fools. I would believe that's uh, Brother Tim Green, uh, his words here. All right, so continuing on, he says, uh, why then do we turn our backs on the attributes and basics of old-time fundamentalism that made them successful, is the question. I would not argue with anyone, so save your 60-cent stamps and time, <laughs> but surely you don't believe our churches are better off spiritually than when I was a boy in the 1950s and 60s, right? They sure aren't. They're um, not uh, better off spiritually. Amen. Matter of fact, a lot of, a lot of um, non-teaching uh, of God's Word in a lot of churches these days. Uh, so he writes here, continuing on, uh, Carnality has eaten away at the body of believers like a viral cancer, leaving ghostly cadavers rattling their bones in unbelief and he writes here in parentheses he writes friend i am not belittling cancer i've had it my wife has and one brother my sister uh, my mother and many friends have died of one type or another of this of that terrible scourge he writes <clears throat> um so worldly influences have nearly doused the shout from the minds, hearts, souls, and mouths of many a born-again child of God, who old-time religion is uh, ridiculed not only by the world, but by many so-called, and I would believe, sorry excuses for real Christians, he says. Mm. <clears throat> uh, divine divisiveness, criticism, gossip, strife, backbiting, arrogance, pride, selfishness, and other respectable uh, Baptist sins have been replaced by gross wickedness and things we are not even to talk about. And the passages um, here we, he gives is Romans 1, 8, uh, 128 and Ephesians 5, 4. So we'll go read those. Uh, May God help us to redig some wells that the Philistines of pride, um, Phariseeism, and uh, plenty more sins have stopped. Uh, up so again he says may uh god help us to redig some wells at the philistines of pride a pharisees phariseeism and plenty more sins have stopped up and he says see genesis 26 18 so uh b so let's go and look at that so the second part of genesis 26 so let's go look at that really quick and then i'll try to give you some context here amen all right so genesis 26 18 <clears throat> all right so let's see okay so um let's go back to um let's see here so we're talking about isaac here and um how he pitched uh, his tent in the valley of Gerir and dwelt there. And then um, 18, which our passage today says, uh, And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And then 19 says, And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Amen. And then the uh, herdmen of Gerir did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also. And he called the name of that uh, of it uh, Sit Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And from that they strove not. And he called the name of it uh, Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And then it says, The Lord appeared unto him 
the uh, same night and said, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Amen. And then so on and so forth. So I just wanted to give you some context of what's going on there. All right, so let's redig those wells and get back to the to the old ways and the ways of uh, preaching hardcore and, uh, and on on uh, uh, what we should be preaching on. Amen. And uh, especially uh, telling people about Jesus and what will happen to their souls if they don't trust Jesus Christ. And tell them there's a hellfire and God's judgment awaits for all those that reject Jesus Christ as their Savior. So make sure we get serious about that and uh, have that. Uh, compassion for others that we would uh care about their souls enough that we would go out there and warn them amen so praise the lord so that's uh that topic and we get to redig some of those old wells and get back to the ways the old ways amen and uh all right so now it's time to get into the boots on the ground topic for today and this is for november 22nd titled spousal support and this takes place on november 22nd, 1744, and the passage is from Proverbs 31.10. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm, for her pride is far above rubies. Proverbs 31.10. All right, so he writes here, Abigail Smith Adams was born 22 November 1744. She was the second of three daughters born into a preacher's family. In 1764, she married John Adams, who became America's second president while it would be easy to allow President Adams' fame to overshadow his wife's role in our nation's founding, such thinking would be foolish. Abigail rose to uh, prominence, and her intellect led her to be considered her husband's most trusted advisor, encourager, and confidant. Uh, one example of her role as his encourager is an excerpt from a letter she wrote him after the Battle of Bunker Hill. Uh, the first two sentences, which are quotes from Scripture. So here's uh, her letter to him. The race is not to be swift, nor the battle to the strong. So the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But the God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Uh, Charles town is laid in ashes the battle began upon our entrenchments upon bunkers hill saturday morning about three o'clock and has not ceased yet and it is now three o'clock sabbath afternoon it is expected they will come over the uh, neck tonight and a dreadful battle must ensue almighty god cover the heads of our countrymen and be a shield to our dear friends. So this was the first two um, sentences of the letter she wrote to him. Uh, in so many marriages, spouses seek to compete or selfishly tear one another down. <laughs> Not good. Uh, but Abigail Adams exemplified the supportive and encouraging spirit described in Proverbs 31. Have you been blessed by a loving and supporting spouse who follows Christ? Mm. So... Good question. Uh, thank God and thank your spouse. So if you have one of those uh, spouses that do that, uh, thank them and thank God and thank your spouse for it. Uh, do you find yourself competing rather than working with your spouse? Hmm. Not good. Ask God to forgive you and ask your spouse to forgive you as well. Ephesians 5, 20-21 gives good advice for every Christian marriage. Give thanks always. For all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Good advice, and that can go for any relationship, whether it be a wife or a husband relationship, or friend relationship, or brother in Christ and brother or sister in Christ relationship. Amen. So, praise the Lord. All right, so that's the end of the boots on the ground. Good uh, advice there, if you're married or if you're... Uh, looking to get married, uh, make sure you treat your um, spouse correctly. And if you don't, uh, ask God to forgive you and and then your spouse to forgive you and then treat them right from that day on. Amen. All right, so now it's time to get into today's uh, hymn. 
and this is hymn 200. We reached hymn 200 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and this is the effective effectualness of the scriptures, a spiritual song, and this is titled, And Is Thy Word, O God? Question mark is uh, the title of the song, and it's written by Benjamin Bedome, B-E-D-D-O-M-E, and he lived from 1717 to 1795, and then Isaac B. Woodbury, 1819 to 1858. So I'll press play and let you listen to the sampling of this hymn, and we'll see if it's an easy one to sing along with. If not, I'll just read you the stanzas. So here we go. All right, I need to try to turn this up more. I guess it's up all the way. All right, so I'll try that again, see if we sing along with it. And is thy word, O God of fire, let light and heat from thence proceed. The holy flame by it produced, do thou with constant fuel. Oh, feed. All right, amen. So that's what it would sound like if you were sing along with it. But I'll uh, just go ahead and read to the rest of the stanzas. A second here. All right, so I'll read to stanza one again and the uh, rest of them. There's four of them here. All right, so again, stanza one says, And is thy word, O God of fire, let light and heat from thence proceed. The holy flame by it produced do thou with constant fuel feed is it a hammer let it break this hard unfeeling heart of mine and by it by its oft repeated strokes prepare the way for joys divine amen let not thy faithful servants lord of fruitless labors e'er complain O oh, may this fire be never quenched this hammer never strike in vain Lord, send thy truth to every land. Let pagans feel its mighty power, and let its wide dom dominion spread till sin and death are known no more. Amen. So that is the hymn. And I'll give you the references here. There's no story for this one, but uh, tomorrow is, there's a story for tomorrow. So the uh, um, references here are Psalm 119, 105 for stanza 1. And then also Second Peter one nineteen, stanza two we have uh, Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine, and then Isaiah sixty six two, stanza three we have First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight, and uh, Philippians two sixteen, and then stanza four we have First uh, Corinthians sixteen twenty four, I think that's uh, no First Chronicles sorry, First Chronicles uh, sixteen twenty four. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 54. Amen. So that is the end of the hymn. Okay, now we'll go ahead and sing the scripture songs again. So we'll do, uh, we'll go ahead and do today's and then yesterday's and then conclude with today's. So we can get this down a little bit so you can uh, hear it. So here we go. So remember what I said, the knocking part. Matthew 6, And then the and Matthew back and 7, forth. 7. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. All right, here we go. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. These things shall be added unto you. 
ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you, it shall be opened unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, these things shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you, it shall be open unto you. Amen. Alright, now I'll go back to yesterday's and do that and then today's again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That's right. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, and shall not come into condemnation. But is passed from death, death unto life, from death, from death unto life, unto life. Amen. That's Jesus speaking. All right, now conclude with today's. And Matthew seven seven. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Right, here we go. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. These things shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. It shall be opened unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, these things shall be added unto you. Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find. And it shall be open unto you, it shall be open unto you. Amen. Good uh, scripture song in there. Alright, well that'll be it for today. So, um, before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Boots on the Ground and the Baptist Bread devotional. Um, not in that order, but the other order. And then the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be um, Colossians 1, 16-17. For the 23rd, and it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him 
all things consist. Amen. And that's talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. God Almighty. God manifest in the flesh. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, uh, Suffering Souls. And the passage is 1 Peter 4.19. So that'll be tomorrow's topic, Suffering Souls. So the Baptist spread. And then the Boots on the Ground topic will be titled, um, Behold the Fake. Hmm. Behold the Fake. And this takes place on November 23rd, 1499. Way back in the year 1499. And the passage is Matthew 24, 24. So that'll be tomorrow's Boots on the Ground. And then finally tomorrow's hymn will be titled, Tis God's Own Word. And this is hymn 201 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. So that'll be tomorrow's um, hymn, Tis God's Own Word. Amen. All right, and you can find a copy of that on MelodyPublications.com. is where you can order a copy of that book. Amen. And then we got the Scripture Songs uh, book and CDs available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And that's where you can order that and pray for them. They're missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for their um, mission work there. Amen. <clears throat> and then we got the Baptist Bread devotional book. And this is uh, what um, this month and next month look like. But if you order now, you'll probably get the one for the first two months of next year, the um, January and February of 2023. So, amen. And uh, so that's available on um, www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then finally, we've got the Boots on the Ground the devotional. And that's available to order off the internet. Um, that's where I got my copy. So, amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today. So, thanks for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Amen. So, bye-bye for now.